I'm going to show you seven advanced editing tips within the Video Leap app, and I don't like wasting people's time, so let's jump into this video. Now, I'm doing this tutorial from my tablet, but it should be the exact same experience on your phone, and let's jump into this. Advanced editing tip number one is how to add a subscribe button to your videos. Now, here I am in the timeline. What I'm going to do is click on stickers. And then in the search bar, I'm just going to search for subscribe and it's going to pull up a whole bunch of different subscribe buttons. So I can just click on one of these. I can resize it with my fingers, move it down on screen. And then when I click play, the subscribe button pops up. We see the like, subscribe, notification. And then once it gets to the end, what it's usually a good idea to do is trim up to that point, click on animation and then click on out. And then just do something like a fade out or a slide down. Slide downs look nice. So that way at least slides off the screen and doesn't just disappear instantly. So that's how you add a subscribe button. Advanced editing tip number two is how to do a zoom in on your videos. Now the secret to that is to use keyframes. So when you click on a video on the far right side, you'll notice this diamond with like a plus button. That is the keyframe feature. And what that does is when you click this, it marks all your settings, where the video is located, all that. So when I scroll to the next spot, let's say further down here, and I zoom in with my fingers on the video, you'll notice it added a keyframe for us. You can even see it on the timeline here. If I was to zoom in, you can see the little diamond here and you can see the diamond at the beginning. And what it's doing is it's marking all the settings we've changed at this point compared to the last point. And because we zoomed in and that's all we did, it now does a zoom in. So when we click play, it does a zoom in and changes the settings to right where we cropped in and then it'll stop there. If you wanted to do a fast zoom in, you just have to put the keyframe points closer to each other. So if I put this really close, place another one and zoom in really far. Now it's gonna do a really fast zoom in because the keyframe points are closer together. One more zoom in effect, if you actually click on your video and split it, what you can actually do is on this second clip, uh, you just zoom in a bit or however much you want. And now when you click play, it'll do a jump zoom in like that, where you doesn't do a slow or fast, it's just instant. Editing tip number three is picture in picture or video on top of video. This is great if you wanna do gaming videos with Video Leap. So I have this clip of me playing uh, Stumble Guys here. And what we can do is we can actually go over to this mixer button and we can grab videos from our timeline. For example, this one, and it adds it right over the top of the other video. So I can use my fingers and just pinch down. I can move myself over to the corner if I was to do like a reaction type video like so. So I could be there reacting as I'm playing the game. And if I wanna go further, I can click the mask button and make this a circle and then put that circle around my head just like that. And then what we can do is resize the circle like so. So now I'm just a circle in the corner. This is not actually me reacting to the game. It's another video. But if this was me playing the game, you could have your reaction there and the game going at the same time all using the mixer option. Editing tip number four is how to add social media logos to your videos. We wanna promote ourselves. We want people to follow us elsewhere. So what you can actually do, I'm actually over on Chrome for this. And please note, I always get comments about this. Make sure you're using the Chrome web browser for this because sometimes you guys are using other ones and it doesn't save properly. But what I'm gonna do is you just click on any of these logos and make sure it has that checkered pattern in the background. So. Before I click on it, you can't see the checkered back background, but after I click on it, you can. That means it's a proper PNG photo, which means if we add this in, you won't even see the checkers. It'll just add itself and look really cool. So I can hold my finger down and I can click save image. And then I can hop back over to video leap and I can go back to the mixer and I can click on this Instagram photo. And as you can see, there's no background to it because it's a proper PNG photo. I say that because there's some fake ones out there, but we can shrink this down. I can put this over in the corner. And then what I can do is extend it just like here on the timeline. I can grab either side and extend this. And then what I can do is click the back button and add some text in. And I can double tap to edit that. And I can resize it with my fingers put it right next to that Instagram logo and boom, I've got my social media handles there. And you can always add more app logos if you want, if you have all the same name everywhere. And there you go, you have your social media handles on your screen. Editing tip number five is color grading our footage. Now the first thing we want, we want to do is click on our video and then we want to click on the filters icon. And we can actually click through these and take a look at each of the effects. We can also use this bar to choose how much of the effect should be applied. And depending how you do this is going to affect the mood 
of your video. For example, if I was to put, let's say this filter on, okay, and I go back and then I go to the adjustment section, which here we can change things like the brightness, highlights, saturation, warmth, depending what you use, you could really affect the mood. If I turn the contrast way up and I turn the saturation down a bit, now we have this like suspenseful horror movie type look. And if you're going for something happy, that could totally affect your mood. Versus if I choose this filter here, where now the grass is really, really bright, I go back and I go into my adjustments and I turn the brightness up and then I go over to saturation and I turn the saturation up. Now we have a much more colorful image that is more happy and exciting and good feeling. You can also adjust the warmth here if we want it to be a warmer or colder shot. Usually warmth, I feel, gives off some more happiness. Now we've totally changed the mood of this. So depending how you color grade this, use the filters, whatever mood you're trying to set, Think about that. Do I want this bright and colorful and happy? Or do I want, am I talking about a serious topic and want less saturation, less color, and usually things to be a bit darker? But whatever mood you're going for, you can make all these adjustments right here inside of Video Leap. Editing tip number six is how to add cinematic black bars to your videos. So all you really have to do is click on the video and then click on mask and then click on mirror and boom, you've got the black bars. If you want, you can zoom with your fingers to make them smaller or bigger. Normally I just leave them as is like that. And if we back up, boom, now as we play our video, we've got this awesome cinematic shot with the black bars there. And if we were to add some zoom there to a slow zoom in with the keyframes, that would probably look super cinematic. Advanced editing tip number seven is how to add external music to your Video Leap project. You probably already noticed, if you click on the audio section and go to music, like a lot of these have that premium logo on it. So how do you get external music? The easiest way is to go to Chrome and depending on, I'll give you two different options here. If you are looking to do YouTube and that's why you're learning Video Leap, what you'll wanna do is search YouTube Audio Library on the Chrome web browser. Again, make sure you're using that. And then right where it says Audio Library, don't click on it. If you do, it's just gonna open up the YouTube app and won't actually get you to the music. What you have to do is hold your finger down and click the Open in New Tab button. When you click this, it opens another tab because they want you to use the mobile app, but the audio library is on the desktop version. So by doing that, it forces the desktop version to open up, which it just did, and I'm in the audio library here. I have all these songs I can go through, and what you can actually do is click the search or filter library, and you can filter it by attribution not required, attribution required, as well as the genre and mood and all of that. And then all you have to do is when you hover over it or you just click near the date, there's a download button. You can click download and on your phone, it'll allow you to download this track. So I'm just gonna do that right now. As you can see, okay, start new download. There we go, it's added. And then when I click open in down here, I can actually scroll over, scroll down, there's video leap. I can click on that and boom, we've got the music added here. So maybe later and now when we click play, we have the cool music that we added from YouTube. Now, myself personally, I use Epidemic Sound for my music. It's a paid subscription, but it has the best selection of music and sound effects. You can actually get a 30-day free trial if you click my link down below in the description. The entire time you're using the music during the free trial, anything you upload to YouTube, you won't get claims on. You are protected under their license during that free trial. So test it out, play with it. It's my favorite. I've been using it for years and it's where I get the best music. And if you are here because you're trying to learn YouTube, make sure to check out our playlist here showing you the best growth strategies for growing on YouTube. I want to make sure your channel grows, so be sure to click here, watch these videos, and I'll see you over there.